Hey YouTube, today I wanted to talk about things like monitors, color accuracy, and how that relates to photography. I specifically really want to talk about the iMac 27 inch monitor, which is a great IPS color, high resolution, well known in the industry for some of the best hardware you can buy, and compared to some of the PC options that are out there. I've always had this 24 inch gaming monitor that was like a TN panel, and I've upgraded to a 27 inch IPS nice Acer model, and I want to look at how good the color is, how far things came, and how that all relates to the work that I do. So let's take a look. Color accuracy is a very hot topic in the professional world. It's something that keeps people up at night, it stresses them out. I've been to my share of press reviews and color proof approvals and I know how helpless it can leave people to feel. Today we're just gonna dip our toes in the water with our enthusiast hats on, and we're not gonna go too deep, but it is something that is important to cover if you want quality work. So all the testing I did today had to be done outside of the screen. I can't do a screen capture for this. You need to see what is physically being displayed by the monitor after all the settings have been applied to get a sense of the color accuracy in the real world. So I had to take pictures of the screens as I turned calibration on and off for you to see what's happening. This is the best way to display what I'm seeing right here in my house. So to set this all up, here's what we're looking at. On the left, you're always going to see the 27 inch iMac. It's IPS, even though it can do 5K. Nobody's using that because you couldn't even read any of the panels, uh, let alone see your work. It would be so small on the screen. Unless you're editing 4K video, I don't think anybody's using that resolution. For the test image, I really wanted to use an image that was widely known, had a great reputation that people could recognize instantly and know what it's supposed to look like, that's hosted on a reputable site, uh, in this case CNN.com. We use the same browser on both screens, uh, Firefox. This image is viewed full screen at 100%, so we're always seeing the same thing. And if you really want to get technical, the image reviewing at 100% is 1200 pixels wide by 1800 pixels tall. So it's going to be larger than both of these monitors can display at 1440p. And that'll help show us how resolution affects an image size. This test will illustrate how a universally accepted image is so different from one computer to the next, and specifically one monitor to the next. Before we get started, I want to share my opinion on this subject, which is that perfect flawless color is impossible across multiple devices and multiple materials and products. And to illustrate that point, I want to go through a list of all of the things that could possibly influence color from the start to the finish. Here we go. So we have the lighting type in the scene. Is it artificial or natural? We have your camera body. We have your lens. We have the in-body camera white balance setting. We have the color profile of the images in the body. Is it sRGB or is it Adobe RGB? We have the capture import settings in the program of your choice. We have the camera profile that that program imports it with. We have the profile it exports with. We have the graphics card in the computer. We have the OS in the computer. We have the driver the graphics card is speaking to the computer with. We have the operating system color profile. We have the calibration software. We have the monitor. We have the monitor's drivers. We have the monitor's color profiles and settings. And if you're printing this, it gets even more complicated. We have the media. We have the media type. The media's finish, its texture and grain. We have the printer being used. The printer profile in play the printer's inks and the number of inks that printer is using. So that's 17 to 20 plus points of calibration required that can all impact color. So, so my point here is this, just do your best. Use the best industry standard practices on your work and your equipment and just pray that all of your hard work isn't being viewed on some crappy old cell phone. So let's break down what we're seeing here. On the left, you're always gonna see the 27 inch iMac. It's running at 1440p. It's an IPS panel. It has 30 bit color. And right now there's no calibration applied. This is technically out of the box. And on the right, you have my old 24 inch BenQ TN panel, eight bit color running at 1080p. To be fair, I bought this for gaming purposes at the time. I wasn't thinking about professional photography when this purchase happened. But after this test, you'll clearly see how it's affecting the work. So let's discuss the differences here on the left and the right. The obvious one is the size 27 is considerably larger than 24. 
you're going to see this image larger on the screen. The next is the image resolution. Look at how much of the image is displayed in that size. You can see considerably more image on the 1440p resolution than the 1080, meaning you get a wider vision of your work. It's sharper, it's higher quality, and more of your panels are going to be on display in the programs you're working on because of that. The next topic would be color. The TN panel on the right, you can clearly see, has this yellowy, greeny cast, whereas the IPS panel on the left has a more neutral, realistic color, and that's the advantage of IPS. It's got better color accuracy and representation. Next, let's quickly look at these both at a 45 degree angle just to show you the viewing range. And the IPS maintains its color and contrast, whereas the TN panel loses about 50% of its accuracy. Nobody would realistically work at this angle, but from my experience using it, even if you like slouch in your chair and you're seeing the panel at a five to 10 degree difference, it's shifting the color, affecting the outcome of your work. So I like to use a spider external calibration tool to fix my color issues and bring me back into alignment. So let's take a look at these two panels after calibrating them with a spider. So you can see a bit of the highlights have been recovered. The contrast is more balanced. Both of the monitors warmed up a little bit. I think this program of the spider prefers more warm skin tones and that's why it does that. The iMac got a little bit warmer, but you'll notice the TN panel, it it lost a bit of the green cast, but it's still not that realistic. Clearly, there's a huge advantage in the IPS panel here. So now let's take a look at the new purchase, the Acer 27 inch with very similar specs to the iMac. It's IPS, it's 1440p. It also has the advantage of 144 Hertz, that extra speed, which is a personal choice for me, but to my knowledge, no Mac has ever come out with that speed of a monitor. And that's something I really enjoy as a PC user. So this is so bad, it's not even worth discussing. It is so overly bright and highly contrasted. These are the factory settings out of the box. And it's probably done this way to just help sell in store and be more attractive under really bright lights, but it's unusable in this state. It's not even worth discussing. If you were to try and manipulate your photos, the highlights and the contrast and the color, and that is your starting point visually, your end product would be so inaccurate worldwide, you'd be in the minority of what you're seeing. This is really why I made this video, because I want to stress the importance of calibration, not trusting a monitor out of the box, and also getting a good quality monitor. So let's toss on that spider calibration again and take a look at what it did. And wow, what a huge difference it made. It restored all those highlights, brought the contrast level, really balanced the color. It looks just as good if not more neutral and realistic than the iMac does. From here, it's more of a matter of choice. Do you like a little bit of a warmer or a little bit of a cooler image? Who knows what the original author of that image really intended and how it was shot in the scene. But overall, this is a much better playing field to start from than the TN panel that I was working with. It, this has really opened my eyes to what I've been missing out on. And you can see it's matching the amount of image space on the screen now, so I'm hoping that makes a better workflow experience. We'll take a quick look at these two monitors at 45 degrees, and you can see that the IPS panel doesn't do as bad as the TN. Still not excellent, but again, who's working at this kind of angle? It's just nice to know that your quality isn't being deteriorated by moving your view a little bit. So that's a look at monitors and color calibration. I've only had this Acer for a day or two, but every time I turn this monitor on, it really blows me away and impresses me with the richness of the colors and the realism at 1440p. And I noticed something interesting. All of the iMacs are covered in glass. So there's a layer between you and the monitor that I didn't realize how much affected the feeling of an image on the screen. The Acer 27 inch doesn't have that. You're just seeing the raw panel. So when you pull up an image, you can actually see the texture and feel it in a whole different realistic physical way. So for 400 bucks Canadian, this was a refurbished buy. I think this is a huge steal. There's no broken pixels, there's no backlight bleed, there's no flickering, everything works perfectly. Let's hope it stays that way. And uh, I would recommend this one so far. Take a look in the description for the details and I'll catch you later guys. If you enjoyed this and learned something, please hit like and subscribe. Visit demonetphotography.com or my Instagram for even more info. Bye for now.